On the morning of July 14th, 1789, nearly a thousand enraged Frenchmen stormed the Bastille prison in the center of Paris. Though the place only had seven prisoners in it at the time, so it was more of a symbolic act rather than a real victory, but whatever. They were angry at France's absolute monarchy, headed by King Louis XVI and his Austrian wife, Queen Marie Antoinette, for many reasons. But the main one was that the king had dismissed France's popular finance minister, Jacques Necker, three days earlier. The Bastille's fall kicked off the French Revolution, which eventually toppled the monarchy and saw both Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette lose their heads, literally. But it also gave the queen a reputation as a self-obsessed, heartless woman. A woman who, when told her people had no bread to eat, arrogantly replied, then let them eat cake. But did Marie Antoinette really say that? And was she really as terrible as those words imply? Well, for the first, definitely not, and the second, not really. So then, why do we think she did and was? First, there's no denying that as a young Austrian archduchess and later as Queen of France, Marie Antoinette lived a life of luxury, up until the end anyway. But while some of the criticism she received from both her contemporaries and today is justified, a lot of it came from individuals who would have done pretty much the same thing to almost anyone else in her position. And in fact, they actually already had. The Queen supposedly made her famous remark in 1789, but variations of let them eat cake, in French this, go back as far as 1660, when the Spanish bride of Louis XIV, who was in a similar situation to Marie Antoinette at the time, exclaimed something to the effect of, let them have the crust of the bread. Which doesn't quite roll off the tongue as easily, does it? But still, similar quotes were also rumored to have been said by several other French noblewomen, including two aunts of Louis XVI. On the other hand, the Enlightenment philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who lived around the same time as Marie Antoinette, but is probably most famous for coining the term social contract, also wrote about the quote in his work, The Confessions. Rousseau ascribes it to a great princess, which at first glance could actually be quite damning for Marie Antoinette. The only issue being that at the time Rousseau wrote that, she was only about 12 and not yet married to the future king, or for that matter, even in France. She wouldn't beheading there for another year or two. As for why Marie Antoinette was eventually so hated by the French people that they sent her to her death, well, there are a few reasons, only some of which were her fault. For one, she was an Austrian Habsburg, and to put it mildly, the Habsburg Empire and the French hadn't exactly been getting on all that well for the last three centuries. France had even fought against Marie Antoinette's mother, Maria Theresa of Austria's, right to succeed to the Habsburg throne. She also was used to personify everything that French revolutionaries saw as wrong with the Ancien Regime, France's absolute monarchy. Mainly, its incompetence in running the country, and its wastefulness in spending vast amounts of tax income on itself. In the decades before the French Revolution, France had amassed an absolutely enormous deficit. Largely because, somewhat ironically, they had helped the liberty-loving American colonists gain independence from Great Britain at the beginning of Louis XVI's reign. But a lot of the blame for the debt was placed squarely on the shoulders of Madame Deficit, as Marie Antoinette came to be affectionately nicknamed. Now, she did have a serious habit of spending, well, not insignificant amounts of royal funds on personal extravagance, including three-foot-high hairstyles, but when compared to the standards for royalty and nobility at that time, it is rather hard to claim that she was extraordinarily free-spending. As for being an example of incompetence, well, the harsh truth is that in the 18th century, the whole point of a queen was to provide the kingdom with an heir, and it took Marie Antoinette and the king eight whole years to consummate their marriage. However, that really shouldn't have been blamed on her. By all accounts, Louis XVI was just about as incapable in the bedroom as he was at running France, and their marriage had been one of political convenience for France and Austria, not one of love. And also, when the two of them married, they were only 14 and 15 years old. So Marie Antoinette was not a self-obsessed, heartless woman. Or at least she wasn't exceptionally so when compared to her contemporaries. And she certainly can't be summed up with the phrase, let them eat cake. If you want to know more about the Austrian Habsburgs, find out about the fall of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was ruled primarily by Marie Antoinette's great-grandnephew, Emperor Franz Joseph, in one of the videos to the left. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next one. And as always, I've been James and thank you for watching Look Back History.